Good morning. It is a good day to be in AI. So let's go ahead and dive right into today's uh, stand-up meeting or scrum uh, for the OpenAI Agent Swarm. So I have an idea. So I want to provide a little bit of context, and I want to let you know that this is just an idea. It's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. But the the uh, my hierarchical autonomous agent swarm idea has garnered a tremendous amount of attention, uh, as well as a lot of very lively discussion and desire to contribute. So what I'm going to try and do is steer the ship uh, from the perspective of a just really short uh, cycle and experiment. I don't think this project is going to live too long because I think you guys are getting it. So basically, there's just a few ground uh, points that we want to try and figure out, and I've got two of them defined, and I'll go over them in the video. But what I wanted to do today, or first, is just provide a little bit of context so that you understand why things are organized the way that they are. So first, here's the, here's the overall repository. In a day, we've had 160 stars uh, and 27 forks, um, and so it's, it's popping. Um, so, uh, quick recap in case you're new to the project, this is my idea of the hierarchical autonomous agent swarm, uh, from open AI. And so the idea is because we can now instantiate agents via API and we kind of have this all in one source, this, this single stop, single shop stop to run agents in the cloud. Uh, the idea is maybe we can use this to create agents that create other agents, but then how do you know how to do that? So there's a hierarchy. So the at the highest end of the hierarchy is the Supreme Oversight Board, which is a set of agents that are going to debate morality, ethics, mission, that sort of thing. And they are one, that's one of their functions. They debate what to do, but then they also have the ability to create other agents. And likewise, so on and so forth down the chain. It's all documented here. I've got it all written out. And so that's that's the number one thing. Next thing that I want to point you to is contributing. So I updated the contributing document. So before you jump in at all, make sure you take a look at this document. I've kept it short and sweet. So you know the con contribution workflow. Number one, watch the latest video. So um, I'll probably have a discussion thread, or you'll probably see it on YouTube. So, but this will basically be like the daily update of where we're at and what we need to do next. So I'm going to try and serve as product owner and scrum master. <laughs> we'll see if it works. But like I said, I don't expect this project to live too long because I think once we get the ideas, you guys will, will be able to take it and run with it. So I don't need to own the thing forever. Like obviously like the scope of this is way bigger than, uh, than I can do myself or that an open source developed and public team can do. Um, so like I said, the whole idea is just over the next week or two, Let's see if we can get if we can lay the groundwork and solve some of the basic problems, and then the rest of you can just take it and go and be free and so on and so forth. Um, so watch the video as you're doing right now. Number two, discuss on the discussion tabs, which I'll show you show you in a second. Number three, if there's a problem, if there's a bug or a problem, create an issue. Um, don't open it into discussions. I already I've seen a few people um, complain about code bugs. Don't put that in the discussions. That's not what it's for. Um, put it in, put it as, as an issue, which is right up here. Um, and then number four is submit a PR. So once you've watched the video, once you've read the discussions, make sure you submit a PR or a pull request. Um, you can also just create a main fork or, a, and, and work on it on your own. Um, I, uh, there's been a few people that have like posted really long conversations and debugs. Please don't do that. Please post a link to your own fork. Um, that will keep the discussions a little bit cleaner and easier. Um, so then in terms of, uh, ground rules, like code of conduct, stay on topic. There's already been a few people that are trying to change the scope of the project that are adding, uh, superfluous information. So those, those topics have been closed. We want to keep this nice and tight and lean. So anything that is off topic or not relevant will be closed. Um, and then the other thing is adhere to the C3PO policy. So this is collaborative culture, community policy, zero tolerance for harm and wasting time. So if you, if before you contribute, ask yourself, is this harmful or is it wasting time? If I, if either is, is yes, or maybe don't post it. Um, this is how I keep, how I run a tight ship in the comment section and everything else. Uh, and then finally the PR requirements, uh, pretty simple, clear description, limits, limit PRs to one big one per day. Uh, make sure that your, your pull request adheres to the current uh, style and structure of the, of the thing. Um, if you're not clear, 
um, then again, like make sure you check because this is this this project is going to be moving quickly, and we're going to have multiple people uh, contributing and and submitting uh, pull requests. I will take a look at any serious pull request, um, and I'll provide you feedback. So like if it doesn't adhere to the right style or if it's trying to change the scope, I'll let you know and say like, hey, go change this and then and then resubmit, um, and we should be good there. Okay, so that's the project at a high level. So now let's jump into the discussions. So like I said, I'm going to keep the discussions nice and trim. And so we've had a few conversations uh, so far. Um, I've provided some feedback, uh, trying to keep everything aligned. So like, for instance, this was a really good question. How do you how do you maintain alignment on the Supreme Oversight Board? I provided some, some feedback there. There's Like I said, there's been a couple conversations that were off topic. So I closed those just because we want to keep the noise to a minimum. Um, but yeah, so jump in here. There's been no issues submitted yet. We've had a couple of successful pull requests. Um, one, they closed on their own, and then uh, two have been merged. Um, so that's that. And I think I think uh, we're ready to just dive into the code. So let me show you where we're at. So there's two, there's two overarching functions that we need to figure out. Once we can figure out these functions and bake them into agents, the rest is a matter of experimentation. And, there, and that's not to say that there aren't other problems to solve because communication between agents is going to be probably the hardest thing, uh, which is like, how do they talk to each other? How do we host the chat rooms? Do we use uh, AMQP message queues? Do we use something else? Do we use syslog? I don't know. Do we uh, spool up containers? We'll have to figure that out, um, but all the data, all the thoughts are gonna need to be stored and retrieved somewhere. Um, so if you have any thoughts about that, please jump in the discussions. Um, in the ACE framework team, we realized that that communication between agents or between layers is actually like conceptually the hardest problem to solve. Building agents is easy. <laughs> That's the easiest part. The hardest part is who's talking to who, how much, how often, who gets to hear what, and and all those communication channels. So if you have any ideas, please let us know in the discussion. Um, and we'll be happy to look at your suggestions because, like I said, that's the hardest thing. So the first function, though, is the agent builder. So we have we have greatly expanded this. I added a readme kind of telling you a very high-level overview of what the agent builder is. So at the highest level, uh, the primary thing we need to do is figure out agents that build agents in a structured hierarchical manner. So here's some of the thoughts that I've had. Uh, a lot of this is based on feedback from the comments in yesterday's video, as well as the discussions and uh, on on um, GitHub as well as Discord. Uh, so then you know there's three primary parameters. There's instructions, functions, and file retrieval. There's a lot to unpack with each of those. So I unpack a little bit like what goes into the instructions. So you need an archetype or a persona. You need a context and a mission um, at, a, at a bare minimum. And then the functions, there's all kinds of functions that we can add. So this is for function calling or tools. So there's internal, there's two, two primary dispositions for a function. There's internal, which is something that the agent can do internally, um, such as an internal data tool or an internal coding tool. Um, and then there's external tools, which is making calls to other things, uh, whether that's you know a cloud platform or a data broker or a solar thing. Ooh, I just had an insight. What if we used like WeV8 or or um, or Pinecone as an external data broker um, in order to organize all the messages? Because then you can use metadata to say who has access to what. Ooh, I like this. Okay, so if we have any Pinecone experts in the audience, and I know some of you people from Pinecone watch this, uh, let's see if we can figure out using that as like an external brain or an external uh, way of managing all of the communication. That could be cool because the vector search is fast and the metadata allows for filtering. So like the metadata could include like what tier it's at as well as what like what team or whatever uh, we could probably implement some really primitive RBAC with metadata. I like that. So if you're not familiar with what RBAC is, it's role-based access control, which means that an agent is going to have uh, some some tier. So like Supreme Oversight Board is tier zero. The executive group is tier one. Uh, their directors are tier two, so on and so forth. And so you can say like, okay, this this set of messages is tier zero messages. So that's like only the Supreme Oversight Board is allowed to see those messages. Obviously, if it's just metadata, like th that can be compromised. But 
again, we're not trying to, this is not trying to be enterprise. This is just getting the proof of concept down. Um, so there you, I, I like that. Let's see it. Let's see if that tracks. Let me know in the comments, either here on YouTube or, um, or over on the GitHub repo. Uh, then retrieval. So the last thing is, what files do you give the agent? And this, the, the, basically the file retrieval is its internal KB uh, system, knowledge base system. So we need like an agent handbook. And I realized that this would be critical is that we need to give every single agent in a swarm the same handbook because that's how, that's like, that's like the employee manual or the user manual. So every agent will have the same baseline understanding as to what it's doing and what it needs and standard operating procedures and morality and ethics and that sort of thing. Uh, some other stuff, if it's an agent for building software, you're going to need to give it software specifications, definition of done, that sort of thing. Um, and then any other relevant documentation like uh, how to access the API, how to write code, code examples, that sort of thing. Anything that's germane to its mission and the functions that it needs to use and write. Um, and then finally, chat functions. So these agents are still fundamentally chatbots. There's the user input, so that's the input which could be an instruction, it could be context, it could be something else, and then there's output. So then the question is, where does that user input come from and where does the output go? So the user input could come from you know, a supervisor agent, so like one agent talking to another agent. That should be relatively easy to set up um, and that might be the most direct way because then you're not, sh you're not shipping um, uh, chat logs up to an external source. It's just supervisor tells you know, another agent, go do this. Um, you might also have group chats. So as we saw with chat dev and a few other things where you probably have the, the you know, one agent receiving multiple inputs from other agents. Um, so we're going to need to figure out like how to host a chat room basically, which that's kind of where I, I started thinking that maybe a pine cone or a weaviate external, uh, vector search would be good. Uh, who knows? Let me know what you think. And then finally telemetry. So let's say for instance, you have an agent that is monitoring, a web server or an agent that is interacting with um, Azure Cloud or something like that, it's going to need to be receiving information updates from whatever external machine it's working on. Um, and that could be a function call as well. Um, so we'll need to figure out this, this, this schema, this paradigm. I have no idea how it's going to work ultimately. So if you got some, some ideas, um, figuring out the conversation pattern, the user input and output with each agent, please jump in the discussion and let us know. One thing I will say is that um, uh, the comments on YouTube are great, um, but people on the repo won't necessarily see those. So if you've got good ideas, please jump over to the discussions on the repo so that everyone can see it. And then, like I said, finally, the agent output. Figuring out where that goes um, is going to be something that we need to figure out. Um, how do you route it, right? Like, So if you have a supervisor agent, how do you know that the output goes to um, like which subordinate? Um, or if it goes up to the cloud or whatever. So we'll need some we'll need some schemas there. So that's what I've done. And then the first pull request, um, so it starts with a, um, or the first uh, instantiation. So we've got a basic script. This was a, a member of the ACE framework team, um, got it working. So come over and check this out. Um, it's just a really basic agent builder. There will be improvements, there'll be iterative improvements, but uh, the idea is that it is getting, it's getting started. So check that out, and then um, we've got a subfolder that has the instructions that he figured out that worked really well, um, as well as the files to send up. So you can see this is starting to come together. I have a feeling it's not going to take that long to figure out how to get the agent builder, the, you know, the agents that build other agents well. Um, there's There are a few functions that we'll need to figure out, like uh, ideally we'll have something that writes the instructions with the system, like a system function that writes the instructions, a system function that writes the mission, a system function that writes the archetypes. That's what I mean, like we need to parameterize the whole thing. So we'll get there though, because these models are pretty powerful. So I think we're, I think we're pretty close on that. So uh, to wrap today's video up, the last thing I wanna tell you about is the toolmaker idea. So I literally just started this, but basically if we have something that can instantiate agents, one of the things that it needs to be able to instantiate is tools. So this is writing the internal tools that it needs, um, either finding them, like you know, saving them in a library, like making a tool library, but honestly, like the ability to write code and integrate it and use it based on specifications is gonna be critical. So basically this is a, this is a function calling function writer. Uh, so my idea here is that 
if you have a, if you have a, a function or a set of functions or agents that are purpose built for making the tools that the rest of the swarm needs, it's kind of like the worker bees, right? Like it's like, oh, hey, the hive, the swarm needs you know X, Y, and Z tools, and it goes off to the tool makers. They make the tools and send it back, and you know they tested it and that, and that sort of thing. So that's one of the things that I think we'll need. Um, so agent builder, tool maker, we'll probably need a few other components. But again, I think once we nail these, like you guys will be able to take it and run with it. So um, yeah, I think that's it for the day. Um, let's keep it going as, as much as we can. And uh, yeah, let's get some stuff done. Uh, have a good one, everybody.